What's up guys? Welcome back to a new episode where we'll be looking at the different data types that we have in JavaScript. If you compare JavaScript to any other programming language such as Java or C Sharp, which are static types, you can code all day long without encouraging any static types. A language with static types is called a static typed language and there is also something called dynamic typed language. The difference is that with static type languages, so Java and C Sharp, you always have to define the data type first. So let's say that we are working with a string. We also need to, we always need to set let string name equal to Dari. This is slightly different in JavaScript. If you run the compiler, you will see the variable and its value. And this can be done with something called type of. So let me get rid of the string inside the name. That's console.log name. And that's also console.log something called type of name. Let's save it. And you can see that the value is name and the type is a string. JavaScript provides two different data types to hold different types of values. You have six primitive values. The first one is a Boolean, which is either true or false. So let me add that or false. You have null, which has no value. You have undefined, which is basically a defined variable, but has no value. So a defined variable with no value. Let's say var. And you have a number. And I know that in other programming language, there is a difference between an integer, decimal, and floating point. But JavaScript will automatically detect a number. You have a string which is basically an array of characters. And there is a symbol. That's a unique value that's not equal to any other value. We also have non-primitive values, which are values that are mutable data types. So the value of an object can be changed after it gets created. So think about an array, a date time, object literal, and so on. Because whenever we create a new date time, and we save it and refresh the browser every single time, the value will be changed. What I want to do right now is to go through all these data types that we have. And I want to start with the most important one, which is a string. And we actually have created the string right here because we have set name equal to single quotes. We could also replace the single quotes with double quotes. And a string basically stores a series of characters, like a name that we have on our screen. But you need to be aware that we could add more than just letters. If we want to add a couple numbers after Dari, save it. You can see that the numbers are printed out as well, but the type stays equal to a string because it's wrapped around single quotes. For the second data type, I want to focus on the number. Let's create a new variable, so let age. And let's set it equal to 24. Let's save it. Well, let's put age inside the console log for both the type of and the value. And you can see that the output is 24 and the data type is a number. And be aware that numbers do not need to be wrapped around single quotes or double quotes. Otherwise, JavaScript will see it as a string. So if we test it out, you can see that the value has been changed to a string because it's not purple anymore and the type is equal to a string. Now, what I want to do for the next one is a Boolean. Let's create a var or a let called is true. And let's set it equal to true. You need to be aware that a Boolean can only have two values, either true or false. So let's copy paste is true in the console log. And you can see that the value is true and the type is a Boolean. And the other value that our Boolean can have is false. Save it, and the type is still a Boolean, and the value is false. A Boolean is mostly used in control structures, such as if statements, loops, and so on. And the purpose is to see something is either true or false. And based on the output, you can print something specific out on the screen. We also have something called null, which is equal to, well, nothing. So let's set let phone equal to null. Let's change the console log of phone, save it. 
and you can see that a null always becomes an object. This is, well, a bug inside JavaScript. We also have an undefined data type, which is something you will probably use a lot because you will basically create a let car and you just close it off with a semicolon. So you're basically storing a variable called car inside the database of our application and you're just not doing anything with it. So that's console log car. And you can see that either the type and the value are both undefined. But what we could do is to assign it to a value later on. So right below our defining car, that set car equal to Mercedes. Save it. And we have overridden, well, the undefined to Mercedes. There's also something which is pretty new to ES6, which is called a symbol. And let's create a val or a let, depends on whatever you want, called symbol. And let's set it equal to a function called symbol. And be aware that whenever you work with a function, you always need to add opening and closing parentheses. What this does is returning a value of the type symbol. So let's place symbol inside our console log, save it. And you can see a function called symbol has been returned and the type is a symbol. Now that we're done with the primitive data types that we have, I want to quickly show you a couple reference types that we have. So right below our symbol, let me add a comment because we're going to work with reference types and they all come back as an object. Let me zoom out a little bit. The first reference type that I want to show you is an array. And in JavaScript, an array is a single variable. So in our case, let's define a const called cars. And let's set it equal to an opening and closing bracket. What you could do inside an array is to store different elements. And an array is usually used when we want to store a list of elements. So well, our name is cars, so let's say inside single quotes, the first car is a Volkswagen, the second one is an Audi, and the last one is a BMW. If we change our console log to a car, or well, to cars, you can see that we have an array of Volkswagen, Audi, and BMW, and the type is equal to an object. There's also another way how you could create an array, and that's by using the array function. So let's comment out our cars. And on the line below, let's define it one more time. So const cars. And we need to set it equal to the keyword new space capital A of array, followed by a set of parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we can add the same values. So let's say Volkswagen, comma, Audi, comma. And the last one is a BMW. If we save it, you can see that the output is exactly the same, but there are just two ways how you could define an array. We also have something called an object literal, which is a comma separated list of name values, pairs wrapped in curly braces. Let's create a var called personal information, and let's set it equal to an opening and closing curly braces. Let's go inside our curly braces and let's hit enter. And what we could do right here is to add information to personal information. And what we could say is the city where we live in is colon, so a value, single quotes, Amsterdam, comma, and the state, colon, space, single quotes, is an H. If we change the console log to personal information, of both console logs that we have, you can see that we created a list and the type is an object. And the last reference type that I want to show you is the date. And I will actually dedicate a full video later on on date times and stuff. But for now, let's add a comment first called date. And let's create a new const called today. And let's set it equal to a function called new space, date with capital D, set of parentheses, semicolon. If we change the console log to today, save it, 
you can see that the date time of today has been printed out on the screen and the type is equal to an object. This was it for this video about data types in JavaScript. I hope that I gave you a good overview of what data types there actually are in JavaScript. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.